Well, I think being gay is like, like an addiction. addiction. <sighs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deshaun King. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing you guys a very personal story about my coming out story. I'm gonna be sharing you guys a couple personal stories from just how it kind of was for me growing up and how things are for me now. I'm also gonna be answering some questions that you guys sent me on Instagram. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions for this video too, for me to talk about. If you haven't got a chance to send me your questions, make sure you follow me on Instagram so you don't miss out on the next time that I do a video like this where I include you guys as well. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys some new products in my daytime skincare routine and I'm also getting dressed and ready for the day because I'm going to take some Instagram photos a little bit later on today. So if you're interested in any of that just continue watching but before we get into the rest of the video make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. And without further ado let's get into the story. Okay so off camera I went and I wet my face because you know we're going to get into the skincare like we do in every video. So I'm going to go in with my Vanity Planet steamer i'll have this linked below for you guys if you're interested in purchasing it so i want to say my whole like coming out journey probably like slowly started to begin i want to say maybe like sixth grade of elementary school in florida elementary school is like k through six but i want to say sixth grade was when i actually officially like came out to somebody and this was my best friend at the time we're not friends anymore and she was the first person that I told but I remember I didn't outright just say that like oh I'm gay I just said that you know I think I like guys like I think I like boys she also has a sister that's lesbian and so she was just very accepting like automatically I'm not the most like masculine presenting person like let's be honest I felt like the majority of people that knew me growing up has clocked my tea from the very beginning when I say I never really had to come out it was never like this big secret it was never like oh my gosh like Deshaun's gay what no it was like yeah WBK we've been new we're gonna go in with our Tula cult classic cleanser this is one of my favorite gentle cleansers that I like using during the day but I want to give you guys a little backstory on my life because then you'll understand like why it was kind of difficult for me to even be open about it in the first place. So if you don't already know, or if you're new to my channel, I grew up as Jehovah's Witness. My mother is a Jehovah's Witness. She still is to this day. I went more in detail about my experience growing up as a Jehovah's Witness in a chit chat video. I'll link that above for you guys to check out if you haven't seen that. Basically in a nutshell, it is a completely different lifestyle than the average person. So with that being said, there were a lot of things that I just did not do growing up. I didn't celebrate birthdays. I didn't celebrate holidays, not even my own birthday. I was I wasn't allowed to date anybody. I wasn't allowed to hang out with kids from school because they weren't Jehovah's Witnesses. If I were to come out like under the supervision of my mom while I was living with her, there's really no telling like how much harder life would have became for me. She would not allow me to have a phone. If I had to talk to anybody, I had to use the house phone. My life was getting up every Saturday morning at eight, nine o'clock, going door to door, knocking on doors. It was not the life that I wanted to live. And being gay is a sin in the Jehovah's Witness religion. It's very black and white. That is not allowed. First of all, there is lesbian and gay. This is not allowed. I mean, growing up, I always knew that I was like different from other boys because I wasn't really interested in a lot of like stereotypical boy activities because I wasn't allowed to do any extracurricular activities that would take me away from my Bible studies. I was just interested in different things and it would bother me so much when like other family members would say oh you need to go outside and play with the boys but like um no I don't want to go outside and play with the sweaty boys and like get dirty and stuff no I'm gonna stay inside watch TV and read a book with the girls you think me being outside with the boys is gonna stop me from being gay no. It's like people was always trying to find something. Yeah, I was trying to find something. 
something, very much something. To say about me growing up, now that I ran out of water in my steamer, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the rest of that cleanser off. Next, I'm gonna go in with a mask. I'm using the Come Clean Clay Mask from Bubble Skincare. If you guys haven't seen my Bubble Skincare review, I'll also link that above for you guys to watch. But let's go ahead and answer our first question that was sent in. At what age did you come out? Was it a difficult time for you or was it a smooth convo? Very, very good question. So, so like I mentioned earlier, I never really officially had to come out, but technically I came out last year around quarantine during the summertime. And this was when I like came out to my mom. So I was 23 years old when that happened. My mom would always avoid like personal topics when it came to like my personal life. She never asked me if I was dating anybody. And I think she knew, I think she knew, mothers always know. But I think she was just waiting on the day that I actually like said something. This is how it happened. So last year around quarantine, my washer and dryer broke. So I was waiting on it to be repaired. And so in the meantime, I would go over to my mom's house and do my laundry. And I was telling her a story about me and my former best friend, the one that I came out to. We had fell out. I don't wanna go too much into the details because it's very messy. But long story short, my best friend at the time had tricked me into talking to a guy that she was already talking to because she wanted to see if he was. And my mom said, well, maybe she thought that way because maybe she thinks you like guys. And I was like, I do. I do. I'm not the intern. I mean, she looked at me like. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. Nothing's wrong with it. So? No, I'm saying now. I mean, it's just very casually. And, you know, my mom didn't really have much to say after that. She was just like, you know how I feel. The Bible principles, you know, she was she was getting very Jehovah Witnessy on me. But then she was like, you know, I still love you. You're still my son. My mother is not going to be accepting of my sexuality. She will never go to my wedding if I ever get married. She will never support me dating another man. I'm okay with that. You know, it doesn't hurt my feelings or anything like that. I respect her for for being herself. I wasn't even surprised because this is something that I've already known about her. I, I knew she wasn't going to be accepting of that, but I knew that she was gonna love me regardless and not shun me out. Me and my dad have never had that conversation, but he he knows. He just doesn't want to like talk about it directly. My dad doesn't like uncomfortable conversations. He's a cancer, so he's very sensitive. It goes without saying that my dad is actually very accepting of me, and I know that he loves me. There was a point in time when like me and my dad, like we just had a terrible relationship. Like there was no relationship. And that goes to my next question that I have. How did your family react to the news? I was at a family function and my grandma pulled me into her bedroom and she wanted to talk to me like one-on-one -on -one and she just straight up asked me. And I was just like, yeah, I, I am, but I don't really label myself. At, at the time I was like, I don't really label myself, but yes, I'm attracted to men. My grandma, she's actually a missionary and my grandpa is a deacon. So they're church people too. They're big church people. She was accepting of it and she's like, I still love you. Now, one thing that she did say though, that I was kind of like, mm, I don't know about that. She was like, I do believe it's a choice. And I was like, mm. No, grandma. But yeah, after that, then she talked to my dad, I guess. And then she mentioned to me again, you know, he's still trying to get used to it. Like I said, he's never talked to me about it directly. Maybe one day he will, but. I don't know. Now, as far as my aunt, and this is my uncle's wife, so she married into the family. She asked me too. So I felt like, you know, the news was kind of going around the house at the time. And my aunt came up to me and she asked, and I was like, yeah, I am. And she said, well, I think being gay is like, like an addiction. addiction. <sighs> All right. Mm. And I said, well, are you addicted to men? You know, as a heterosexual woman. And she said, huh, you know, that's a great question. I'll, I'll have to think about that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, because you sound about dumb as f That was the most outlandish thing. And I think she felt bad for saying that. But at first, everybody was being like stereotypical Christians and being like very judgy. But for the most part, everyone in my family is pretty accepting of me as far as I know. Next question. Do you still struggle with knowing for sure you won't go to hell because of your sexuality? Seeing as though I was raised in a Jehovah's Witness household, if you're unfamiliar with the religion, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in like hell as a place that like bad people go. I never really believed in the concept of hell anyway. Anyways, even when I left the religion when I was 17 years old, my spiritual views are just 
kind of completely different. And there are certain parts of the Bible that I can appreciate, but I don't use the Bible as like my main source of spiritual knowledge. I don't believe that my sexuality is going to lead me to internal damnation. So no. <laughs> and the next question is, did it take a long time to find your community of people who accept and love you? I want to say I found my community of people here on YouTube. Like you guys subscribe to me, you support my content, you're very supportive. And I feel like my channel is a safe space. But as far as like people IRL and maybe like on social media, uh, it's kind of tricky. I, I don't really feel like I belong to a community of people. I don't really feel accepted by the gay community, if that makes sense, because I don't really have that many gay friends and I don't really involve myself in like the gay clickiness on social media, like on Twitter or Instagram. Like I really don't interact with that many gay people. I don't know. I just don't think people really care for me. I don't know. I don't know. It could be just like all in my head, but I guess that brings me to the next question that was asked. Do you have bisexual slash gay friends? I do. So my friend Sydney, she's bisexual. You guys have seen Sydney in my gay chat episode three. So I'll actually link that above too in a playlist for you guys to see. My friend Basial, he's gay. I'm looking at my contacts right right now because I can't really keep track of everything in my head. I say I, ha I have a couple. And a couple years ago, I actually made it a point to like specifically find gay friends because I felt like that was an element of me that was missing. I'm gonna pause right here, go off camera and wash this mask off and continue on with the rest of my routine. Okay, so I washed that mask off and I also shaved a little bit because I'm gonna take some photos later on today. I'm gonna go in with this Good Molecules Glycolic Exfoliating Toner. If you've seen my drugstore video, I'll actually link that above. I'm just gonna plug in all the videos I've been doing lately. Ooh, but there was another question. Did you come out or just bring a boyfriend over? Do you think everyone has to verbally come out? I had to verbally come out to my mom because she was just gonna play dumb until I said something. Now with my dad on the other hand, it's just a matter of when he feels like talking about her when he feels like bringing it up. I don't know when that might happen. I think with him, I would probably would have to bring a boyfriend over just to be like, hey, like, Like I said earlier, I wasn't even allowed to date in high school when I was living with my mom. Bringing a boyfriend over, are you kidding me? Do you know Miss King? Well, she's not Miss King anymore because she remarried. Mrs. King would have my neck. Are you kidding? I don't think that everyone has to verbally come out, but I think as far as like your family, I feel like there should be a conversation just out of respect because to some people it's a big deal and to some people it's not a big deal. There's a reason why it's called coming out. The society has built itself around this perception that like being gay is just wrong when that's not the case and I encourage people that watch me if you are watching this and you are still in the closet if you have not came out yet take your time because everyone's experience is different I'm grateful enough that I didn't have like a tragic or bad experience especially if you grew up in a religious household like how I did I had to wait until I moved out of my mom's house to feel comfortable living my my life but then I'm grateful that I was able to to move in with my dad who's not Jehovah's Witness and who does not hold me to those strict standards and I was able to kind of find myself even to this day I'm about to be 25 this year I'm still trying to figure myself out you have to get yourself to a mental space where you're comfortable to take on anything I'm gonna take the bounce back toner from bubble skincare and spray that over my other toner Another thing I like doing in my daytime skincare routine, I like using this Istin Hyaluronic Concentrate and putting this like underneath my eyes because I have oily combination skin. So the areas that I will get dry, I like to just hydrate just a little bit more. So I'll put that under my eyes and on my cheeks. And this stuff just absorbs into your skin. Next, I'm gonna take this Naturium Niacin My Gel Cream. This is the moisturizer that I will use during the day because it is a gel-based moisturizer. So it's gonna feel very light on my skin. And the very last product we're gonna put on today is SPF. I know you do not expect me to go outside without no sun protection. So we're gonna put on some SPF from Istin, the Air Fatona SPF. This entire bottle will last you a very long time. Okay, so now that I'm done with the skincare portion, I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed and finish the rest of me getting ready and then I'll tap in with you guys to close out this video. Okay, so we are all ready. I have on this shirt from Zara and then I have on this gold bracelet that my dad got me a couple Christmases ago. I also have this Chanel lip balm that I'm gonna put on too. This is like a hydrating conditioning balm. I'll also link this below. 
But that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that my story resonates with somebody out there. When I put this out there, I don't know who all is gonna see this, but I hope that whoever receives this message know that you are not alone. Know that what you're going through, you're not the only person going through it. It will get better. It's gotten so much better for me. There were a couple of uncomfortable times, but those times have made me stronger. They've made me the person that I am today, and I'm grateful for those hard times. And I'm also grateful for the love and support that I receive from people you guys here on my channel, people in my personal life. I'm very grateful and I don't take a single thing for granted. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to turn on my post notifications to be notified of all my future videos. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and all my other socials linked down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Thank you.